Good day and welcome to our today's class. Of course, we are still on Kenos cycle, solving numericals on Kenos cycle. So the question number two says 0 0.5 kilogram of air. Of course, we are told that that air is an ideal gas. It executes a Kenos power cycle having a thermal efficiency of 50%. The heat transferred to the air during the isothermal expansion is 40 kilojoules. At the beginning of the isothermal expansion, the pressure is 7 bar and the volume is 0.12 meter cube. Now we are asked to determine one, the maximum and minimum temperature of the circle, of course in Kelvin, the volume at the end of isothermal expansion in meter cube, the heat transfer for each of the four processes in kilojoules, and we are given, of course, our CV to be equal to 0 0.721, of course, specific heat capacity at constant volume, be equal to 0 0.721 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and CP to be equal to 1.008 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So what will I be doing next? I will be drawing my PV and TS diagram for k cycle. So I will be drawing them here. So I'll be having my PV diagram first. Of course, there will be P. Now I'll be drawing my stages. Let me see the first one. Second one. Third one. Let me see the fourth one. So at this point, what do I have? Of course, this will be my point one, two, three, and four. Of course, what do you see? Can trace down my lines that quickly. Down my lines here, I will be having V3, here is V2, here is V4, and here is V1. For my pressure, I'm going to have P1 here. Secondly, secondly, I'm going to have P2. Of course. P4. P4. And of course, lastly, we have P. Of course, at this point, we have P. Now, do not forget that from here, from this stage to this stage, of course, it has constant temperature. From here to here is also has constant temperature. So I can represent that. Of course, I can put isotherm. and this stage and of course for this stage and this stage I have isentropic because they are isentropic of course from here to here is nothing but isentropic compression expansion and here to here is compression so next what will I do I'm going to be drawing my TS diagram but from this PV diagram you agree with me that from stage one to stage two we have temperature to be at its maximum. This is where we can find our maximum temperature. And from stage, and from stage what? From stage three to stage four, this is where we can find our minimum temperature. So of course, what I'm just trying to tell you is that from here to here, that is maximum. From here to this, from T3 to T4, temperature is at its minimum. So let me draw my TS diagram. I have a straight line, of course. I have a straight line representing our processes on this S diagram. Stage two to three, stage three, four. Now at stage two to three, of course, we know that entropy is constant. So we have S2 to S3. From this point to this point, of course, entropy is also constant to S1 equals to S4. So here we are having our maximum temperature, of course, P1 is equal to P2. And at this point, P4 similarly will be equal to P3. So what do we have? Of course, from our 
question, we are having 0 0.5 kilograms of air. So that is the mass of air we are going to be bringing at our data now. So we have the first thing here to be mass of air. Of course, M is equal to 0 0.5 kilograms. Next, what do we have? We have efficiency to be 50%. So efficiency is 0 0.5. We have, what do we have next? We have isotherma, the heat transfer to the air during the isotherma expansion is 40 kilo joules. So what do we have? We have heat added, of course, we can represent it by QA equals to what? 40 kilo joules. What do we have next? We have our pressure. Of course, pressure P at the beginning of isothermal expansion, of course, it will be P1, it will be equal to 7 bar. And of course, we know 7 bar is nothing but 7 times 10 to the power of 5 newton per meter squared. What do we have next? We have our volume. Of course, at the beginning of isothermal expansion, it will be V1, which is equal to 0 0.12 meter cube. Now, to solve this question, number one, we are asked to find our minimum and maximum temperature. We are to find P max and P min. So, from the question here, we are told that the heat transfer to the air during the isothermal expansion is 40 kilojoules. At the beginning of the isothermal expansion, the pressure is 7 bar. What does it mean? From here, here we are having what a constant temperature expansion of course isothermal expansion and the pressure there is seven bar so our p1 of course is seven bar and also we are told that we have a volume of 0 0.12 meter cube of course still at our isothermal expansion so our v1 here will be nothing but 0 0.12 meter of course like i told you earlier on the question says at the beginning of the isothermal expansion, of course, this is where isothermal expansion begins. The pressure is 7 bar, so P1 will be 7 bar. And of course, at the beginning of isothermal expansion, which is still this point, our volume will be 0 0.12 meter cube. So we are going to be looking for T max and T min, which is the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature in Kelvin. So for an ID gas, we know that PV. For an ID gas, we know that PV is equal to what? MRT. Of course, PV is equal to MRT. Now, for to look for our maximum temperature, of course, we can represent this formula, or we can write this formula as P1, V1, is equal to MRT1. That is our initial, um, our initial values. Of course, P1 is at its initial V1 at its initial, and T1, of course, at initial, which is, of course, the maximum temperature. Now, M, we have M to be 0 0.5, and R is nothing but our gas constant, which is what? R is 287, R is 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So, we can submit our values. We are going to have, we are going to be having P, which is 7, times 10 to the power of 5, multiplying our volume, which is 0 0.12, all over what? Not all over now. It is equal to, we have not, we have not divided yet. We have mass to be 0 0.5, and our gas constant to be 287. What do we have next? We have our temperature, which is unknown. Well, maximum temperature which is unknown of course maximum temperature of course from t1 so we can represent p1 as our maximum temperature and we can still put max with everyone whichever one you choose but well, let's go with maximum so i can just put p max we can use p1 okay now to make to get the value of t max what do i do Get the value of T max. I'm going to be dividing both sides by its coefficient, which is 0 0.5 times 287. So I have 0 0.5 times 
Our maximum temperature. Of course, we're having four here, not five. Press your calculator correctly. This will give you our maximum temperature. Next, what do we do? We are going to be looking for our minimum temperature. So we are going to be using the formula for what? For efficiency. That's the thermal efficiency of a kernel cycle. Of course, we know that it's nothing but what? Our maximum temperature minus our minimum temperature all over our maximum temperature. We already, we are given the efficiency to be 50%, so we are going to be having 0.5. First, we can make um, our maximum temperature, the subject of the relation here. What are we going to be doing? Of course, NT, the efficiency will be equal to what? One minus T minimum, all over what? All over T max. So if I cross multiply, I'll be having T max, my K naught efficiency will be equal to 1 minus T minimum. Of course, if I divide, first, when we cross multiply, what are we going to have? Of course, here we are going to have T max here. So I can rewrite my formula to be T max, and that is K naught efficiency will be equal to T max minus T minimum. Of course, make T minimum the subject of the formula. I'm going to be taking T minimum to the other side. Now, of course, I can also make the correction here. I have T max here. So this is what we have by multiplying through by T max. So what we do, make T mean subject. Of course, I'll be taking T mean to the other side and taking T max efficiency to the other side implies that T minimum be equal to T max minus T max multiplied by K naught efficiency. It implies that T minimum will be equal to T max. What is my T max? Of course, it's 585.4. So I have 585.4 minus my T max, which is T585. 0.4 multiplied by my k naught efficiency, which is 0 0.5. It implies that what my t minimum will be nothing but 292.7. First, t minimum equals to 292.7 Kelvin. So, this is my maximum temperature, and this is my minimum temperature. Next, I'm going to be looking for the volume at the end of isothermal expansion. So I will just wipe this place. The second thing we are going to be looking for here is the volume at the end of compression. Volume at the end of isothermal expansion. Now, from here, of course, you will agree with me that our volume at the end of isothermal expansion is nothing but what? T2. Isothermal expansion goes from stage 1 to 2. So this is the beginning of isothermal expansion, and this is the end of isothermal expansion. So the volume at the end of isothermal expansion is B2, and that is the volume we are going to be looking for here. Now, if you agree with me, from our first law of thermodynamics, we know that the U 
is nothing but what is equal to what the q plus what plus d plus d w of course me from our first law of thermodynamics that the the u plus the u plus e plus the v plus the w rather so this is what we have from our first law of thermodynamics now the question says we should find the volume at the end of isothermal expansion that is there is no change in temperature and if there is no change in temperature of course there is no change in internal energy it implies that the q is equal to d w and of course we can write this to be what we can write this to be q equals to what w of course they are the same we are talking about heat here and we are talking about work done here now take note of this we are going to be making reference with it we know that w is equals to p dv of course we know that w is equals to p dv and we also know that p dv is equals to what m RT. I've explained this, or I've made reference to this earlier on on ID gas. Of course, for an ID gas, PV is equal to MRT. So if I make P the subject here, what will happen? I will have P to be equal to what? MRT all over V. So what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be what? Substituting P for, I'm going to be substituting the value of P in this equation here. It implies that what? implies that I'm going to be having W, okay? So I can just clean this. We know this. So I say P is equal to MRT all over V. So W is equal to MRT all over V, dV. Now, if I integrate this, I will be having what? W will be equal to the integral. I'm going to be integrating from V1 to V2. I will be getting from V1 to V2. I have MRT all over V dV. So this is what I have. So I'm going to be taking MRT, which is constant outside the integration sign. So W will be equal to MRT, the integral from V1 to V2 of 1 all over V dV. Of course, we know that the integral of 1 over V is nothing but in V. That is, in, that is the natural logarithm of V. So we have W to be equal to MRT in V. So this is what we have. Of course, our limit still remains from V1 to V2. So I'm going to be substituting my limit. Of course, if I substitute my limit, I'm going to have B, I'm going to have W to be equal to MRT into the lean of what? Of V2 all over what? All over V1. So this is what I have here. Now, from my diagram, you will agree with me that the ratio, because we said from stage 1 to stage 2 is isothermal expansion. It means that the ratio of isothermal expansion here is nothing but what? V2 all over V1. So, and of course, we can say that to R, we can denote it by R, which is our um, expansion ratio, to be equal to what? V2 all over V1. So that's the ratio of volume across this isothermal expansion line so next what do i do i'm going to be substituting r for v2 all over v1 here if i do that i'm going to be having w to be equal to w will be equal to what w will be equal to mrt in mrt in r so this is what I have. Now, don't forget that I said Q is equal to W. We have already established that, of course, for our isothermal expansion process, Q, that is heat, is equal to W, which is our work. So I can say Q 
is equal to MRT mean R. And of course, we know that from here, what, what do we do? We know that MRT is nothing but what? It's nothing but P all over B. So MRT is nothing but PB. So Q will become PB leave R. This is what we have. Now, at our initial stages, of course, here will be P1 at initial. Here will also be what? The V1 at initial. Of course, here too can be T1. Here too can be T1. Now, what do we do? From our relations that we have derived here, you will agree with me that we can find the value of V2. We can find the value of V2. Of course, we have our P1, which is the pressure, which is 7 bar. We have our V1, which is our volume, which is 0 0.12 meter cube. And of course, we know that R is nothing but what? V2 all over V1. So we can replace R with V2 all over V1 and look for the value of V2. What do we do from here? We are going to be making use of this formula. Of course, I have derived some couple of formulas for you here. So you can just make use of any one to get your value. So here I said Q is equal to what? It's equal to MRT1 into what? The mean of R of, sorry, compression with um, expansion ratio. Expansion ratio is nothing but what? V2 all over V1. So what do I have? I'm going to be substituting my values. From the question, I have 40 kilojoules to be my heat. So I have 40 kilojoules. And of course, kilo is nothing but 1,000. So I'm going to be having 40 times 10 to the power of 3 to be equal to my mass, of course, is what? Is 0 0.5 kg. I have 0 0.5 multiplied by R, of course, I told you that R is 287, multiply by T1, which is the maximum temperature. Multiply by T1, which is the maximum temperature, of course, it's 585.4. So we have 585.4. Multiplying what? Multiplying the mean of V2 all over V1. So I have V2, which is unknown. And V1, which is what? Which is 0 0.12 meter cube. So that's 0 0.12 meter cube. by 0 0.12. This is what I have. Next, what do I do? I will be taking the natural logarithm of both sides. If I do that, I will be going to be having exponential of 0 0.476 to be equals to V2 all over what? All over, v, all over 0, point what? 0 0.12. This is what I have. What is the exponential of 0 0.476? Press your calculator, you have 1.6096. It will be 1.6096. This will be equal to what? V2 all over 0 0.12. This is what I have. At this junction, of course, we can cross multiply. We'll be having V2 to be equal to 1.6096. Multiply by 0 0.12.
What do you have? Press your calculator. You will have nothing but 0 0.193 meter cube. So 0 0.193. Of course, we know that our unit is a meter cube. So this is nothing but the volume at the end of isothermal expansion, which will be V, which will be 2 here. This is 2. So our V2 is nothing but what? 0 0.193 meter cube. So we have our V2. So next, we are asked to find the heat transfer for each of the four processes in kilojoules. We are looking for the heat transfer for each of the four processes. Now, what are we going to be doing? We are going to be looking for the heat transfer. This line will be for our process. Here will be for what? And here, what do we have here? We have the heat transfer. Now, for process one to two, for process one to two, of course, we are having what? We are having isothermal, what? We are having isothermal expansion. Of course, for process one to two, we have isothermal expansion. Isothermal expansion. And of course, don't forget from the question, we were told that during the isothermal expansion, we have an, a heat transfer of 40 kilojoules. So what do we have? Our heat transfer for process 1 to 2, which is isothermal expansion, was 40 kilojoules. Next, for process what? For process 2, 3. For process 2 to 3, what do we have? We have adiabatic, a reversible adiabatic expansion or isentropic expansion. So I can just say isentropic expansion here. Now, when we talk about isentropic expansion, we are talking about what? Constant heat. That is, there is no heat. Of course, if there is no heat, what do we have as our heat transfer? Of course, it will be equal to zero because there is no change of heat. Of course, there is no change of heat. So, Adiabatic process, of course, there is no change of heat. So our heat transfer for process two to three will be zero. Next, we go to process three to four. We go to process three to four. Process three to four is nothing but what? Isothermal compression. We have isothermal compression. Of course. At this point, we are having what? We are having our isothermal compression, that is our heat at this point. It will still be the same as our heat at, it's going to be the same as our isothermal compression. Because for a kernel cycle, we know that the kernel cycle is perfectly insulated. That means the amount of heat that comes into a kernel cycle, we see the amount of heat that goes do work by compression. So when we are having few, when we are having heat expansion here, the same amount of heat will be the same amount of heat that will be used for compression. Because of course a kernel cycle has a supply source of heat at its compression. So definitely we are going to be having 40 kilojoules. But of course it's negative because it is compression. So we are having minus 40 kilojoules. And lastly, from process 4 to 1, what do we have? We have isentropic compression. Isentropic compression. Uh, so, for isentropic compression, what do we have? Do not forget that isentropic compression is, of course, the same thing as adiabatic, irreversible adiabatic compression. And of course, adiabatic means what? There is no change in heat. So of course, our heat transfer, therefore, is equal to zero. So this is the heat transfer for each of the four processes. This is one, two, two to three, three to four, and of course, four to one. So I hope you enjoy and understand this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more numericals.
moving on. Bye.